You guys are looking great. Glad you're here. We've been in this uh, series on follow back. We're following Jesus. Jesus pursued us, but we're following him back. Great, getting a lot of great feedback about this too, by the way. It's changing your lives, and that's what it's all about. Um, so let me ask you a question. In following Jesus, being like Jesus, what, what do you think is the number one way that people know that we are Christ followers? How about if we have a bumper sticker that says, honk if you love Jesus? I, I say, put one on there that says, tithe if you love Jesus, anybody can honk. Uh, what about the person that stands out the corner, let's just pretend, with a placard in their hands, and they're saying, turn or burn. We're, we're going to fly to the sky in the sweet by and by while you fry. <laughs> We really have that happening today out there. Isn't that awesome? I love being protested. Uh, just gives us a chance to, to show them that Jesus loves them, right? And uh, some of you haven't been saved too long, born again, and so behave yourself. Don't do anything you ought not to do. Uh, how, about, how about if uh, you speak in Shakespearean English, vows and thuses? Well, people go, wow, you're acting just like Jesus. Jesus talked in King James language. No, probably not. How about if people saw you wearing a three-piece suit seven days a week and you said, God. <laughs> or if the women all wore their, you know, blue jean skirts down there and their, their hair piled up really, really high, people say, oh, you look just like Jesus, sister. I don't think so. Jesus gave us the number one way that people know that we are followers of him. In John 13, I want you to read it with me. It's in your outline or up on the screen. Here's what Jesus said. Ready, go. A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you. How do people know that you are followers of Jesus Christ? If you love each other like he loves you. One of my pastors who used to work on staff, he's now home in heaven. His name was Cecil Parker. And Cecil used to say this. I he's a Georgian, southern draw. He'd say, I love you. And you can't help it. <laughs> so I want you to turn to the people around you this morning and honor Cecil and just say, I love you, and you can't help it. Tell somebody. <laughs> so here's a question. If Jesus wants us to love like he loves, then how does Jesus love? If people are going to know that we are followers of Jesus Christ, then what's the way that we love that people say, oh, you're acting just like Jesus? In the love chapter of the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13, the answer is there. Paul the Apostle gives us these, these five different ways that we love each other like God loves us, like Jesus loves us. And in fact, they're already there for you, so I just want you to say them out loud. The first one is this. If I don't love others, say it with me, no matter what I say, no matter what I say, if I don't love, it doesn't matter. Verse uh, 1 of 1 Corinthians 13, it says, If I could speak in any languages in heaven or on earth, but didn't love others, I would only be making meaningless noise like a loud gong and a clanging cymbal. What is Paul talking about? He's talking about believers who had this ability to pray in a prayer language. It was a spiritual language given to them by God. It's a beautiful thing, but he said, If you don't have love, that it doesn't matter how much you speak in tongues. He said, you can have 10 different languages and you, and you can speak in an earthly language or, or heavenly language, but if you don't have love, then it doesn't matter what you say. How many of you have ever said something to somebody and it was the truth? It was the truth, but it wasn't said in love. It was the truth, but it, didn't, it wasn't said in love. How did that work out for you? Not good. I've done it a few hundred times myself. Amen. Amen. 
So no matter what I say, if I don't have love, it, it just it doesn't matter. The second thing is this. If I don't love others, no matter what I what? No matter what I know, it won't matter. Verse 2. Paul says this. Let's put it up on the screen. Please, I beg you. Here we go. I may have the gift of prophecy. I may understand all the secret things of God and have all knowledge, but if I do not have love, then I am, say it with me, then I am nothing. I'm nothing. So it doesn't matter what I know. He's saying knowledge without love, knowledge without love is nothing. Now, how many of you know we've really experienced an explosion of knowledge over the last decade? And here's the reason why. Siri. Nobody's dumb anymore. Everybody knows everything because Siri knows everything, right? She is so smart. Watch this. Siri, how far is the moon from the earth? The distance from Earth to the moon at 12.37 p.m. PDT, Sunday, the 24th of March, 2019, is about 235,123 miles. I am smart. <laughs> Siri. Excuse me. Siri. How many people live in the United States? What? Please be quiet, Siri. She did. Siri, how many people live in the United States of America? As of 2017, the population of United States of America was 325,145,963. Siri, how old was Elvis when he died? Elvis Presley died the 16th of August, 1977 at age 42 in Graceland. Age 42 in Graceland. <laughs> Let's ask her one more question. Siri, do I look fat in these clothes? Judging from your voice, I'd say you must be fairly attractive. <laughs> Siri is so smart. Oh my gosh. But with this explosion of knowledge, let, let me ask you this question. Is the world a better place? Have we solved all the world's problems with all this knowledge? No, in fact, I would say from a decade, decade ago, the intensity's kind of ramped up. There's still violence, there's still hate, there's still prejudice, there's still racism, there's still, go down the list. So knowledge without love means nothing. I know you've seen people uh, that are very, very knowledgeable. They, you know, they're, they're smart in science and math and art and, and, and Phi Beta Kappa, Kappa Chi people, and you go, wow. But then they open their mouth, and they're mean, they're rude. Not all of them, but I'm saying the ones that are. And you just go, man, your knowledge means nothing. Plus, you're just too smart for me. Next, if I don't love others, no matter what I believe, it won't matter. Have you ever met Mr. Bible Answer Man? Yeah. Or Mrs. Bible Answer Man? Listen, they, will, they know the Bible frontwards and backwards, and they will thump you on the head with the Bible. In Jesus' name, pay him. <laughs> but they know John 3, 16. They know where you can find, right? Here's what I'm saying. No matter what I believe, if I don't have love, I can know all the doctrines of the Bible, all of them, but not have love. It doesn't matter one bit. Because, see, belief alone is not going to matter. How many of you know the devil believes in Jesus? He does. But you're not going to see him in heaven? Why? Because belief in Jesus is not enough. You've got to love Jesus, and you've got to let him love you, and then you love others in return. And by that, all men will know that you are followers of Jesus, not because I can quote all the doctrines of the church. Amen. <laughs> Next one. By the way, let me go back and read that scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, 2. 
But even if I had the gift of faith so that I could speak to a mountain and make it move, I would still be worth nothing at all without love. The next one is this. Read it with me. It's in your outline up on the screen. Uh, let's put it up there. If I don't love others, no matter what I give, it won't matter. Read with me 1 Corinthians 13, 3. Everybody ready? Go. If I give everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body but didn't love others, I would be of, say that with me, no value whatsoever. Listen, I can even be a martyr for the faith. I can give away my body and to be burned for the sake of Jesus Christ. But if I am not doing it out of love, then it really is no value whatsoever. So it doesn't matter what I give. If it's not done in love, it doesn't matter. It's no value. You can write out that million-dollar tithe check today, and I hope you do. <laughs> Even if you don't give it in love, I'll still take it. We've got a lot of ministry to do here. But if you gave a million-dollar tithe check today and, and it wasn't given with the right heart of love, then it's of no, no value. It doesn't count. That's how important the love of Jesus is, that we, we live our lives out of his kind of love. The next one is this. If I don't love others, no matter what I accomplish, this is huge, no matter what I accomplish, it won't matter. Verse 3, no, so no matter what I say, what I believe, or what I do, I'm what? I'm bankrupt. I'm bankrupt without love. That means you can get your face on the cover of Time Magazine or Fortune 500. You know, I, I, can, I can get a, the Nobel Peace Prize. I can get all these accolades of my achievements, but, but if, I, if I'm not living out of love, then it really doesn't matter at all. I won't, it, it won't matter because relationships are more important than accomplishments. Love matters. So there you have it. In the love chapter, Paul is saying... Love matters. And then the scripture says that God is love. Everybody say, God is love. God is love. That means he's not, he doesn't have love. He is love. And then he turns around 2,000 years ago, and he points at his son, Jesus Christ. He sends him to this earth, and he says, look at my son, Jesus. Watch how he behaves. Watch his attitudes. Watch the way he treats the poor, the less fortunate, the way he loves and he gives. Watch that and emulate that. Follow Jesus, my son. And if you do, you're going to live life well. So the question is, how, how does Jesus love us so that we can love each other the same way, so that everybody will know that we're following Jesus Christ? Here's a couple things. You may want to jot these down. The first one. Jesus says, if you're going to follow my kind of love, then realize, number one, love is a command. Love is a command. Now, let's go back to that first scripture for just a second. When Jesus said in John 13, he said, a new commandment. Everybody say commandment. Amen. A new commandment I give you. Not a suggestion, not an idea. This is an option. He said, a new commandment I give you that you love one another. Love is a command. This next verse says the same thing in 2 John 1, 6. Love means doing what God has commanded us, and he has commanded us to love one another. If God commands me to love my wife, then that means I can command my love towards her. And there's times when, I know it's hard for you to believe, in our 39 years of marriage, that I haven't always felt in love. There's been a day or two when I've had to command my love towards my wife. And I promise you there's a bunch of days when she had to command her love towards me. I know that's hard for you to believe because I'm so, as Siri said, so good looking, handsome. Listen, what I'm saying is that love is not a feeling. I don't care what Hollywood tells us. Love creates feelings, it produces feelings, but love itself is not a feeling. Love is a command. I command my heart to love my wife, even when there's not a quiver in my liver, <laughs> when there's not jelly in my belly. <laughs> 
When you command yourself to love your child, your spouse, your friend, that's real love. Next, Jesus says, if you're going to love like I love, that you have to understand that love is not only a command, you have to realize that love is a choice. Love is a choice. Verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Go after. Everybody say, go after. Go after a life of love as if your life depended on it because it does. Go after. That means I have to make a choice. I, pr- I make a conscious effort. I choose. I make a resolution to love somebody. Whether they're good or they're bad, I choose to love you. And so that really messes up another myth about love when people say, I just have no control over my love. Oh, Pastor James, you don't understand. I know what you think about him, but he just swept me off my feet. I I just, I can't control it. I just fell in love. As if love is a ditch. I fell in love. In the book, The Road Less Traveled, Dr. Scott Peck devoted a whole chapter to this. If you haven't read the book, read it. Powerful, The Road Less Traveled. And basically, here's what he says in this one chapter. He says that if you fall into love, you will eventually fall back out of love if you don't go to the deeper levels of love that we're talking about. That love is a command and love is a choice that I do whether I feel like it or not. In fact, the Bible teaches that when I'm acting in a loving way, when I don't feel like it, that is the highest form of love there is because I'm loving by faith, not by feelings. How many of you know that there are times we naturally feel in love? The day you get married, I feel in love. Definitely in the honeymoon night. Oh, I feel in love. I'm all shook up. I'm in love, man. But then a few years later, a few kids, bank account's a little low, getting into a fight. (laughs) Siri, help me out. We don't feel like loving then sometimes. But that's when we command our love. We command our love. It's a, it's a choice. It's a command. I don't know about you, but I sure am glad that's the way God loves me. How many, how many of you are glad that God does not just love you when he feels like it and when you are being a good boy, a good girl? Because we would all be a greasy spot in the road if God gave us what we deserved. Right? <laughs> But God gives you not what you deserve, but what you need. That's called grace. And then God turns around and says, the same way I have loved you, you are to love one another in your life. That means when they deserve you to smack them, or whatever it may be, you love them. You choose to love them. That's love. I command my love. It's a choice. Thirdly, Jesus would say, you want to love like me? Then you have to understand that love is a conduct. It's a conduct. It's something you do. There's action to it. John 3, 18. Let's all read this out loud, everybody. Ready? Go. Let us stop just saying we love people. Let us really love them and show it. Show it how? By our actions. We have to not just, oh, I feel love, but I got to do love. Love isn't just something I feel. It's something I do. There's some action to what I do. Now watch this. Let me show you how Jesus painted this picture. The scripture we read together at the beginning of the message in John 13. By this would all men know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Everybody will know that you're a disciple of me, a follower of me if you love each other, right? But what did Jesus just do before he said that? He washed his disciples' stanky, nasty, cruddy feet. In those days, they didn't wear pretty shoes like I got. They had sandals. So everywhere they walked, it was whatever's in the the dirty road. And it's, you know, animal caca. 
dirt and all this stuff. And so the disciples are around the table and nobody wanted to take on the form of a slave because in those days, the only people who washed feet were slaves. Nobody wanted to stoop to that because remember, they just had an argument who's the greatest. I'm the greatest. God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, what does he do? He goes, puts on an apron, servant's apron, starts washing their feet nasty he's washing her feet washing her feet and then he gets up and this is what he says let's put it up on the screen this is what happens when he had finished washing their feet he put on his clothes and returned to his place do you understand what I have done for you ask them you call me teacher and lord and rightly so for that is what I am let's go to the next one please now that I your lord and your teacher have washed your feet you also should have washed another's feet. One another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done. Is Jesus saying we all need to go home today and wash each other's feet? Thank God, no. <laughs> I've seen some of your feet. <laughs> and I know mine. What he's saying is this. Watch this. Watch this. Listen, don't miss this. He's saying go home and serve one another. Do what nobody else wants to do. Hey, honey, you want a cup of coffee? Do you want another cup of coffee? You want a bowl of Cheerios? Listen, in our families, when we start to try to outserve each other, you're going to have a revolution of love. Try that in the marketplace. You'll be promoted so fast you'll make your head spin. Because employers are always looking for people who know how to serve. They get there early. They stay late. They're given 110%. Why? Because they're not working for man. They're working for the Lord, and they're serving others out of love. All of a sudden, the world becomes a different place when we begin to love each other in this way, and we serve each other, even when the ones we're serving has stinky fate. Man, you nasty, but I'm going to serve you anyway. Loving and serving go hand in hand. I want to introduce you to a very dear friend of ours, and that's Miss Velma Andrews. Lydia, bring her on up here. Would you welcome Velma this morning? Uh, I think we got some pictures of you guys. Look at there, you two are dancing. Look at you guys. Woo! Uh huh. Sunshine. That's me and you. Remember that? I do. Uh huh. Yes, ma'am. New screensaver. Yes. <laughs> Listen, we have history of right out 30 years. 30 years. When Lydia and I first came to this church, within a year, we met this lady and her little boy, uh, Kellen. And uh, Lydia, take it from there. Well, um, our, both of our boys were in the same class at school, and so Kellen came over to our house to play, and that night Velma came and she said, well, my son was at your house today, so I thought I might ought to come and introduce myself, and from that moment on, we were best friends, literally, and our kids brought us together, and then we became Kellen's godparents, and so I helped her because her mom got sick with cancer, and so I helped her by taking care of Kellen every day, and she'd drop him off at my house in the morning, and I'd take him to school, and then I'd pick him up, and he'd stay with us until she got home, and we'd all eat dinner together, and and they'd go home. And, uh, but this girl has been through a lot with me, that's for sure. And in the early days, man, of us pioneering this church and digging it out, man, we were broke, and I'm talking broke. And I wouldn't have had clothes if it hadn't been for her. She literally bought me pretty much everything I wore. And uh, she always took care of me, was always there for me. And to this day, the minute she finds out I'm sick, she comes to my house with a pot full of okra soup. Okra soup is my favorite. I am a southern girl at heart. And um, it's hamburger and okra soup. And, uh, and so she's always, I mean, still to this day, she's one of the best friends I ever had. And there's times in our life when we hadn't got to spend a lot of time with each other, but it doesn't matter because she's always, always there. If I pick up the phone, she is there. It doesn't matter what situation I'm in. She's a true blue friend, no matter what. Amen. Velma, you also have been to uh, Lydia Confidant in the early days, especially when uh, she had so many me people coming at her and she didn't have a safe place. You're always that safe place for her. And, uh, and when I wasn't feeling that love for you, she was a safe place for me. <laughs> oh, Velma has, uh, how do we say this? She has some skeletons inside of her from Lydia sharing things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, oh, we used to say, let's knock him in the head and go shopping. <laughs> 
we'll, we'll check and see if he's alive when we get back. <laughs> so, Velma, I also know that you went with Lydia quite a bit back in the day to yes, her yes. meetings and, and musicals, that kind of stuff. She and, traveled with me all the yeah, time. Yeah, she took you to some places that kind of tested the friendship. A lot. <laughs> like where? Oh, well, right here in town we went to where there used to be signs that said, you know, nobody that looks like you is supposed to be here after dark. She waited till dark and she took me there. <laughs> and, but we made it through and when we got finished, the lady said, we've been trying to get more of your kind over here. <laughs> and Velma Durrell looked at me and she goes, and what kind would that be? <laughs> <laughs> then this girl took me to Arkansas. I think she's trying to kill me. <laughs> but she, she said it was love. <laughs> Population like 525 and nobody looked like me. <laughs> now, I try to get my hair done and everybody's like, no, there, there's no place here. So we get to Walmart and there's somebody who looks at me. I said, yes, where can I get my hair done? She looked at me like, she looked at you me because I grew up with Prissy, the one she's talking to. And Prissy looks at me and she goes, she looked at Velma. She goes, girl, you ain't from here. She looks at me. She's, she's from California with you, huh? And I said, yeah. She said, girl, there ain't no place to get your hair done except across the tracks. And Velma said, well, I won't be going across the tracks. <laughs> yeah, well, so. this, this lady right here, I'm not, I'm not kidding when I say this. She has been the dearest friend. When you think of loving and serving and how they go to hand in hand, it's not just, listen, I, I had to, to get her up here. I, I couldn't let her know what I was going to do today. Because she is a behind-the-scenes person only, and she serves um, when nobody's looking. And and uh, you know, you get to heaven, Valma. There's going to be a oh my gosh, there's going to be a whole lot of yeah. rewards for you there because of your heart of love. And I just want to say this: because of her and because of her friendship, from day one we never saw color. But I never experienced the level of prejudice until she became my best friend, and it was like I. I don't know, I just didn't see it before. And to see it and experience it with our Godson and the prejudice that's in this world. But yet through love, it can overcome anything. That's it. And she has loved me even when I was clueless. She loved me anyway. And I thank her so much for that friendship and for that love. And she's taught me so, so much about this world. Would you help me in giving our friend Velma Andrews double honor today? Can we say thank you to her? Let me give you one more, one more thought, and then we're going to come to prayer. Because I'm getting hungry. <laughs> if you're going to love like Jesus loves, if I'm going to love like Jesus loves, it means we realize that love is a conduct, it's a choice, it's a command. And lastly, love is a commitment. It's a commitment. 1 John 4, 16, God is love. If we keep on, ever say keep on. Keep on, don't slow down, don't stop. If we keep on loving others, we will stay one in our hearts with God and he will stay one with us. Listen, keep on, what does that mean? You just God's kind of love doesn't quit. Everybody look up here just a second, don't miss this. The way Jesus loves you is this way. He loves you on your good days. He still loves you on your bad days. He never gives up on you, ever. His love is crazy love. It's divine. It doesn't make sense. Because Jesus is committed to you. God is committed to you. God so loved the world that he gave his son. I thought about this this week. Had Lydia and I, back in the day, when we were going through our rough patches, and there were many of those in the early days because of her. <laughs> Had we not been committed to each other with God's kind of love, had it been based only on feelings, well, I'm just not in love with him anymore. Make me vomit, stop. I just, I just don't feel that loving feeling. Lydia and I could have used that excuse a lot. 
But there's a decision we made as a teenager, as 19-year-old, 16-year-old at the beginning. We said, the vows that we made are sacred. Till death do us part. So divorce will never be an option. Murder is. <laughs> but <laughs> divorce is not. But here we are. We just celebrated our 39th. Next year is going to be 40 years of marriage. It's good. It's good. Yeah. But there's a payoff when you have God's love and you stay committed. You stay committed to that wayward adult child that is just doing so many dumb things. You're like, oh my gosh, I hate that kid. Sorry, John. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. But you, you just don't quit anyways. Um, that's, that's divine love. Uh, I, Velma and Kellen and Candace for 30 years, and I promise you it hasn't been always easy. Because if you stay in real relationship with people, you're going to have some you're gonna have some rough patches. You're not always going to see eye to eye, and we've walked through some things. Velma could have just said, forget it. I'm bailing out of this covenant relationship, but she never has. Her son has, my, my God's son. Who's my son? And now we're on the other end. Don't give up. Don't give up. Love never ends. Amen. Let's pray. May the Holy Spirit fill you with the love of the Father. You say, James, I can't love like you described today. I know, and neither can I. The way we love God's way is by being filled with the Spirit of God. For Scripture says that the Spirit of God is poured out into our hearts and the Spirit pours God's love into us so that we can love others the way He loves us. Some of you are in a place right now in a marriage where you, the fires have really burned down. Few of you have even considered bailing out, calling it quits. But today God says, no, don't do it. Love is a choice. Love is a commitment. Love is a command. Love by faith. Some of you, again, would just wanted to bail out on that kid. Just the kid's going nuts, and you're going, like, I, I just, I'm done. But right now, God is saying, don't give up. And I want you to do this for me. In your own words, your own way, pray something like this to God. He's listening to your words in your heart more than your words on your lips. So just say something like this. Say, God, I need to be filled with your divine love. God, fill me right now with the Holy Spirit that I can love others the way you love me unconditionally. God, I choose today to not give up. I choose today to love by faith. I choose to wash dirty feet, to serve and to love those that sometimes deserve it the least. 